What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and to the turbo build. Today we're going to go and look at the hot side piping, mock it all up, take a look at all the clearances, where we need to modify things if any. We're going to test fit officially that uh, prefab kit, see if it actually interferes where I thought it will. Um, and maybe I'll be surprised, I hope so, but uh, well, let's get into it. We got the car nice and high in the air so we can pull those headers out and that's what we're going to do next. So we've got parts, pieces, nuts, bolts, we got stuff everywhere here. Alright now that we have the headers out we can start putting the manifolds in. The passenger side here, we had to take the uh, dipstick tube out and the starter out to get the header off here. Alright here's what I was talking about with that uh, driver's side manifold it's right in the booster actually I can't even line the bolt holes so it needs to go back about another you know half three quarters of an inch and it just will not go past that booster so obviously my buddy who had this kit he didn't have uh, power brakes he had manual brakes and there's a reason why this kit worked for him so well too bad so let's try the truck manifold next okay so testing the truck manifold Obviously, this is going to have to go, this flange, and I think the alternator there, if you can see that, let me get the light, the alternator there is going to be in the way, but I think I'm going to move that. So I think this kick out right here in the manifold will work well. Um, it's going to actually move and route the exhaust in between here, or kind of around the pulley down in here. It's going to be tight, but it might work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buck off this flange here because I don't need it and I'll move the alternator remove the alternator and then we'll see if we can fit this guy in there first bracket off now when you install an f-body accessory drive on an iron block one of the bosses on the block is not actually drilled and tapped for uh, accepting the f-body alternator bracket so I'll show you where that is that's on the front of the engine as well Okay, so here's the bolt hole that you have to drill and tap um, and where it goes through the, the F-body alternator bracket. The reason why I've spaced it out with all these washers is because I didn't drill and tap it far enough. I didn't really uh, feel comfortable doing that. So I'll pull this guy off and you can get a better idea of where that location is on the block itself, on the front of the block. All right, hopefully you can see that, but that's the bolt hole right there that you need to drill and tap on the front of the block in relation to the other one that's the lower bolt hole for the alternator bracket it's the upper one kind of next to where it says six liter on the block itself so that's the one you got to drill and tap okay alternators out now um it's not bolted up but it's getting close definitely getting close yeah, this section is going to have to be straightened out, actually. Hmm, okay. It'll straighten out and tuck closer to the block. But that looks pretty, pretty promising. So, hacking this up here instead of just hacking off the flange and then extending that straight down might be the way to go. I can even put a little bend down to go underneath my power steering pressure line. But uh, that's not bad. Okay, now I get to work with these manifolds. Let's remove the heat shield here. Drop that on the ground. Don't know if I'll need this or if I'll use this again, but... Okay, and then I'm gonna cut this off here and just start working with this. This is gonna be the, uh, the driver's forward-facing manifold. Not the best cut, not the fastest cut, but the saw's all but it's a cut. So we'll go put this 
back on the car and see if I made any improvements again. This part might have to cut it off, but we'll see. Well, not bad, it's better. Just, uh, I think I'll come in here. Actually, maybe come in here. Maybe I'll cut this off on straight here. And extend everything kind of down. Yeah, so maybe something like this. Cut this out straight across, because this is right where my rag joint actually is over there. So I'll cut this straight across, and then I'll put a piece of pipe, and it'll come actually inside like that. So the passenger side looks okay. If I run that C6 manifold, I've got some piping already made. And then all I have to do is feed that into the flange. I'll make a bracket that runs off the head and goes to the turbo here. I don't want to hard mount the turbo to the frame, which I was originally going to do because I think that's actually going to cause a lot of problem in the hot side piping. I think the piping will crack. Maybe a flex coupler would work, but I'm not going to risk it. Okay, so here's the redesigned turbo brace for the T4 flange. Now, the welds, well, I'm not a welder, so they didn't really turn out that great, but I'll tell you, it's strong. And it took me a while to figure out how to best do this because this is extending quite a bit off of the cylinder head, and I'll show you when I put that in the car. So it took a while to figure out how to best do this with the existing brace that was made before. Now I didn't show the welding process because I was having trouble welding. And as I said, I'm not a welder. And so I was trying to figure out what the problem was and then I figured it out. And so I was trying to figure out why my welds weren't going very well. And then I looked at my regulator and I've got no more shielding gas left. So I don't do a lot of welding and I use this very infrequently. And it looks like my little <laughs> aluminum bottle, which I thought was a good idea in the beginning, is gonna come and bite me here a little bit because these things need to be recertified, at least up where I am in the 604, every five years. And of course, I don't use the gas within five years, so right around the six year mark when I run out, I can't refill my tank. So that's one of the reasons why the welds didn't look as good as I wanted them to, but uh, we'll get that fixed. So I gotta take this in and get it pressure tested, recertified, then I can fill more gas. So if you're gonna get into welding, do yourself a favor, and buy a steel tank, especially if you don't use your gas or your welder that often because you don't want to have to make a trip and get it recertified every single time you want to get it refilled. A steel bottle will go 10 years before recertification is required, so that's the way I would go. Okay, so here's where the flange is going to bolt to the head and where the turbo is going to mount. And um, we'll take a look, we'll bolt that turbo up and we'll see what we have for routing. I'm worried a little bit about the exhaust or the downpipe from the turbo because as you can see that C6 manifold really sort of takes up a lot of real estate right in that area here, right in this area here. So we'll bolt everything up and see how it looks. All right, now you see the turbo brace all bolted up here, and I'll go mount the turbo next. All right, now the turbo's bolted to the brace, and you can kind of see where I'm positioning it here. Um, the exhaust, or the downpipe, is gonna have to snake all the way around this manifold. So I think what I'm gonna do is revert back to my original plan and stay the course, and I'm gonna run the passenger side manifold down and forward like the driver's side. Think that it's gonna look the best, it's gonna work the best, it's gonna be the most symmetrical design. 
And if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it once or maybe twice, but I'm not gonna do it three times. So we're gonna take this manifold off and we're gonna hack off the flange of the passenger side and bolt that up and see if we can start roading that. I'll just give you an idea what it looks like on this side here. I do have to get a better light. I gotta really get a better light. So here's where the uh, inlet for the turbo is, right? This is where the merge is gonna be from the passenger and the driver's side. And then right over here, you can see I'll have to clock that uh, compressor housing a little bit, but then we're gonna get um, air from the intercooler or the intercooler piping, the cold side attaching right in there. So that is so far where I plan on running the turbo. Um, the battery will probably have to go and I'll do a little bit of a 45 in here and I'll stuff a filter right down in here where my battery is. So that's the plan. And to cut the passenger side, I'm gonna bring out the big guns for this one. The chop saw. So I wanna thank my sponsor, you know who you are, for uh, getting me set up with this thing. And maybe, just maybe in the future, we can collaborate on something, but for now, we're gonna put this big bad boy to the test and see how fast we can hack off that flange on the passenger side. So before you do any type of cutting, wear these, wear these, and wear these. So we're gonna put these on right now and we're gonna see if we can cut that off. Definitely made short work of that. Not ideal, but pretty straight. yank this manifold off now. And we'll see how. All right. Does anybody use air anymore? Well, hopefully you can see that down there, but we made some progress. We can bolt the manifold up now, but, so I don't know if you can see that, but it discharges right into the cross member. So that's not gonna be very good. So what I'm gonna have to come and do is take some of this out and straighten everything out. Um, this is gonna take some time and some fab skills and I'm gonna be learning here, but um, I think it's gonna look the best. So I'll go ahead and I'll cut that a bit more and I'll show you what it looks like when I do that. All right, well, a whole bunch of cutting and chopping and grinding and measure five times, cut once. This is what I ended up with. Um, of course, I'm gonna have to blend this a bit better, but I got a hose clamp holding together what my plan is. So extending this manifold as straight out as possible. Um, this angle, I can always cut it and rotate this once I get it in the car, but here's a general idea and 
a little bit more shaping in there, maybe a little bit better fitting, but I think I could probably weld that anyways, the way it is. So that is sort of the idea. These nuts, of course, will come off. These are part of the old system for the heat shielding and I might reuse them elsewhere, but uh, then I'll blend all this in here, maybe a little hammer work to fold that in a bit more, but that will be the idea of the passenger manifold. Let's go put that back on the car and see how that fits. Okay, here it is all on the car and it looks like it will fit for the most part. The heater hose connections are a bit in the way, but I can always massage this and move this and perhaps angle it in here. So for the most part, it clears everything underneath and it kind of comes out in the right spot. I think a little bit down and over here because what I'm gonna end up doing is You can see that I'm going to end up doing something like this and then going underneath the thermostat housing and connecting in. So a couple 90 degrees U-bends in here together, have this go right around thermostat housing and it'll plug in there. So I'm probably going to just weld this up um, when I get some gas and I got some inner shield. Maybe I could try that actually, but I'm going to weld this up and then start playing with clocking around the V-band over here and get everything, getting everything where I want to. In the end of the day, if I have to remove those two fittings for the, the heater and then just plug them off, tap them, plug them off, whatever, that's okay. This car doesn't see any winter driving. <laughs> a time when I actually need a heater core so I may actually just delete that whole system because it's probably gonna leak one day anyways it's the original one at least it's as long as I've owned the car the heater core has been in it and that's uh, well let's just say I bought the car in 1992 so you do the math that heater core is in there for a long time so so sort of the hot side coming together right now um, things are looking promising especially when uh, this is my first kick at the can here all right, and here's the driver's side modification. Um, as you can see, this is definitely not round, so adapting this to this, challenging for sure. But I think what we can do is something like that right there. Uh, there's gonna be a gap around the whole entire, maybe I can move this. There's gonna be a bit of a gap around the pipe, but we're gonna kinda come in somewhere like this and I might try to flare this actually. I might try to uh, open this up a bit more, but that's the idea there. Maybe a bit more shaping and whatnot. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll get another piece here, but until I get some gas, I think we're gonna call it a day. Well, that's it for this video, everyone. I'm out of gas and so is my welder. So we'll see you in the next one and we'll weld those manifolds up and then we'll start plumbing the rest of the hot side. So until then, Remember, the best time of the year to enjoy your project is all year round and keep the shiny side up. Take care. What was I thinking with an aluminum bottle? And if you haven't done it yet, hit that subscribe button for me, will ya? It really helps you guys out.